The next exercise that we're going to do is the single leg circle. So placing both legs on the ground, place the right leg up into the air. In Brooke's case, the hand is on the knee because the leg, if it is too tight in the hamstring, will start to pull on the back. And it's a small circle around breathing out and breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in. So imagine the stomach is actually attached to the leg. Pull the stomach in to raise the leg. Lengthen the stomach to lower the leg. Pull the stomach in to raise the leg. Breathe out and stretch the stomach muscles. If you can't feel this exercise working, it should actually be working on the inner thighs. Place the fingers onto the inner thighs and press the muscle against the fingers to allow the leg to get more connection on the inner thigh. If the, right, if the opposite hip starts to lift off the ground, place the hand on the hip to keep it stable. And change legs. That's it. Rest the leg on the ground. Take the other leg up into the air. And again, breathing out as you lower the leg. Breathe in as you raise the leg. Breathe out as you lower, keeping the fingers dug into the muscle. Breathe in as you raise, making sure that the B line is constantly working. Deep sigh out and a deep breath in. The back is always flat in this position. And then we change direction. So breathing out as you go down, breathing in as you come up. Breathing out, flatten the abdominals, breathe in as you raise. Breathe out as you lower, keeping the fingers pressed into the muscle. And last one. And change legs to do the other direction on the other leg. Fingers into the muscle, hand on the hip to stabilize the hip. Breathe out as you lower. And breathe in as you raise. Keeping in mind not to lower the leg too far down. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in and a deep sigh out. The neck and shoulders should be comfortably relaxed at all times. And one more circle, keeping the beeline working all the time, and relax. Okay, we'll now go into the perfect abdominal curl. The perfect abdominal curl is actually a stomach crunch in the old term, and we're actually now working to get the ribs towards the hips. Most cases, when you do an abdominal crunch, as people do in the gym, I'll get Joe to demonstrate what we normally see in the gyms. Place the hands behind the head and do the normal crunch that you see in the gyms. So this is the type of movement that you'll actually see working in gyms all the time. Okay, relax. We don't want to do that too much. Okay, placing the hands behind the head. This is the best way to actually do an abdominal crunch. And what we'll do in Brooke's case is to actually get her legs up onto a triangular cushion. The reason for this is that while the legs are rested on the cushion, there is minimal use of the hip flexors in this position so that the stomach actually has to work independently of hip flexors. The cushion is a triangle or a high-shaped cushion with the legs rested on top. If the cushion is too far away, that could arch the back. So with Brooke, we also have the hands crossed on opposite shoulders so that there is no neck strain. Now, what brings you forward into the abdominal curl is drawing the ribs towards the hips as close as possible while scooping the stomach without straining the back of the neck. So breathing out as you slowly curl forward, drawing the ribs towards the hips. Breathe in, return only 10%. And breathe out, curl forward. Breathe in, return only 10%. And keep going. Deep sigh out as you come forward. We have a saying, if you're not toning it, you're flabbing it. So if you rest in between each repetition, the muscles release and they contract. They release and they contract. So in actual fact, we want to keep them working all the time so you can feel the muscles constantly under work. Breathing out as you curl forward. Breathing in as you release 10%, breathe out, curl forward. Now notice Joe's knees, the femur is at about approximately a 45 degree angle. And take your feet further away this time, and balance on your heels. To toes up towards you, as high as you can, and keep working. Breathing out as you curl forward. Feel that more? So the actual abdominals will work a lot more when the feet are flexed. Two more repetitions, breathing in, and sigh as you curl forward, breathe in, and relax. In the stomach stretches, we'll be using both the arms and the legs to alternately work to strengthen up the back area. So lifting the right arm, just slightly off the ground, breathing out, and making sure that you're beelining all the time. Change and lift the other arm. Breathe in, change, and lift the right leg, just slightly off the ground. Breathe in, change, and lift the left leg. 
And once again, breathing in and changing. And breathe out as lift the right arm. Breathe in, change, breathe out, lift the left. And keep continuing, making sure that the abdominals are drawn in by using the B-line. And in Brooke's case, she's got a pad underneath the hips in order to keep the back from arching considerably. Breathing in and changing, breathing out and stretching. Trying to keep that B-line working all the time. It's a deep sigh out, and the shoulders are never hunching. The shoulders are still pressed in towards the hips. Lengthening through the toes without lifting very high. One more, breathing out on the lift of the arm, lengthening through the fingers. Breathe in, change, breathe out, lift without hunching the shoulder. One more on the leg, breathing out as you lift, lengthening through the toe. Breathe in and sigh. And relax. And we're going to come now into the cat stretch. So, up on the hands and the knees, keeping the back as flat as possible. And this time we're going to actually draw the hips towards the ribs, rounding the back into a C curve to the ceiling. Breathing in as you release, lengthening out the spine in a straight position. Don't let the back arch at all. And breathing out and draw the hips to the ribs as much as possible, with the chin drawn towards the chest. Breathe in, lengthen out the spine as long as possible. And again, breathe out and tuck. Draw the ribs to the hips, still working on the B-line. Breathing in, lengthen all the way through the spine, through the neck, through the crown of the head, and breathe out as if someone's pulling you up by your lower back to the ceiling. Breathe in as you release. Use the abdominal muscles here. Use the B-line. And breathe out. Draw the hips to the ribs using the B-line. And then comfortably sit back into a rest position. Hands by the sides in Brooke's case. And just allowing the back to stretch and relax. Gently pressing the tailbone in towards the heels while the upper back remains relaxed. Maintaining our bodies in great condition is of importance to all of us. Through this series of videos, we hope that we have been able to help you in reducing the stresses of daily living and improving your well-being. Through this end, we hope that you can reduce your risk of injury and improve your performance. My name is Alan Menezes from the Pilates Institute of Australasia.